it happened. The Knicks traded for Derrick Rose. But the real important question that I'm here waiting on, I'm, I'm refreshing, I'm searching, I'm going through Twitter, I'm going this, there, I'm Googling it, I'm trying to figure out the important question. What number is Derrick Rose wearing? Is Reggie Bullock giving up 25? I know Obi's not giving up one, so does he wear a new number? Because his entire career is either wearing number one as he did in Chicago or uh, number 25 as he did. Did he? What did he wear in Minnesota? Did he wear 25 or was it one? So the question is, is he going to pay off Reggie Bullock? Because I think Reggie Bullock, number 25, has a meaning to Reggie Bullock, too. I don't know. Y'all probably like, yo, CK, I just want to know about the trade and what you think about the trade. Who cares about his number? I care about his number. I'm one of those superstitious kind of guys where I feel like there's a lot of meaning to a number for a player. I, I hooped. It was important to me what number I wore. My lucky number is number nine. Um, it has a lot to do with my mom and her birthday, and it's been my favorite number ever since. I love the number nine. But if I can't get the number nine when I hoop, I wore number one because of Tracy McGrady, my favorite basketball player of all time. So it, it, numbers are important to an extent. Some people do it because of their birthday. Some people do it because of anniversary. Some people do it because of, you know, death to family. It's important. So that being said, Derrick Rose, what number are you going to wear? Watch me find out this man just wears like number two. But you can't wear number two, Derrick Rose. We're saving number two for somebody else. Okay, D. Rose, we're saving the number two for somebody else. All right, let's talk about the trade. Run the intro. What's going on, CK Crew? It's your boy CK2K here. Welcome back to another video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to see whenever these videos are coming out. Guys, I appreciate all the support on this channel and the other channel. I dropped a new uh, video on my gaming slash entertainment channel, CKTV. Go check that out if you want to. It's actually really funny. But let's talk about this Derrick Rose trade. Now, I'm going to start by saying this. I'm not upset by the trade. You flip a player that we don't use and the worst pick of the many picks we have in this year's draft, and that's all it took to get Derrick Rose, who's somebody that is going to be in our rotation. How do you be upset at that? I know a lot of you guys can think that, you know, about the Emmanuel Quickly stuff and minutes and this, that, and the third lock jam at the guard position. We'll talk about that later on in the video, but for the, just seeing the trade in black and white, the Knicks traded Dennis Smith Jr. in the 2021 second round pick, and for Derrick Rose, I say job well done. And you know who else is a fan? Jimmy Butler's a fan too. Tibbs getting the band back together, man. <laughs> <laughs> he getting the band back together. Um, they're missing a couple pieces, but I think they'll figure it out. <laughs> this is a good deal and it means so many different things when well at least to me because i even tweeted about it i was saying i need some time to marinate on this so before i could come out front with a thought on the actual deal because obviously i knew the trade in itself was a good move but i'm here thinking about the knicks and what's going on for this team in this and third and i've just come to the conclusion which i'm okay with is I think the Knicks are pivoting away from the rebuild and not in the way that's going to piss off a lot of the Knicks fans that are hoping for an organic rebuild like myself. But in the process, we're still doing that the way that I've been asking and preaching for in so many videos on this channel. I've asked for an organic rebuild, but what's the other thing I've always said when it comes to the Knicks actually rebuilding and becoming a good team? for a long time, building a foundation, not just being good for a few years and then being trash again, building that foundation. We still have the young guys that we're going to be building around as well as growing throughout the process. RJ Barrett, Obi Toppin, Mitchell Robinson, Emmanuel Quickly, Kevin Knox is still here right now. I mean, for right now, Frank Nilkina is still here. We still have a younger core of players on this team that could be a part of the long term. Maybe there's the rumors on the Frank Nilkina and Kevin Knox um, thing. We'll talk about that later. But at the same time, we have a young core of players that are part of the, rot the rotation that are good and are still growing. Emmanuel Quickly has already shown how much of a sponge he is when we're playing guys like Damian Lillard, when we're playing guys like Lou Williams, when he's watching Kawhi Leonard in pregames. We've seen the kind of sponge that Emmanuel Quickly is from opposing players. Players. Now when you have a former MVP, a guy that was probably considered one of the best point guards in the game before any of his injuries, in the same locker room, he came out and 
was even saying that he wanted to do everything he could to help Killian Hayes become a better player. Go back and forth about that all you want, but all Der Derrick Rose can do is give his advice for what worked for him and then go off of that. The rest is up to Killian Hayes. But all that being said, I expect that to be the same or same deal with Emmanuel Quickly. Emmanuel Quickly is already playing really well, and with a guy like Derrick Rose coming to the team, is only going to add and help to Emmanuel Quickly's game long term. Now, with that being said, I know the conversation that a lot of people are really caring about are the minutes, the minute distribution, because it's one thing to trade Dennis Smith Jr. for uh, Derrick Rose, because a lot of people are going to say, well, I mean, we traded a guard for a guard, so we're pretty much in the same position as we were before, but we're really not, because Dennis Smith Jr. was out of the rotation. Now we're bringing in another guy who is going to be a rotational player. Hell, Derrick Rose is having an okay season up until the last few games where he, was where he wasn't playing, whether it was for an injury or whether it was waiting for the trade, whatever the case may have been. Derrick Derrick Rose is playing okay off the bench for the Detroit Pistons. So then the question is, who does he come into rotation and whose minutes are he stealing? Is he stealing? Now, a lot of speculation is coming around it being Austin Rivers. Austin Rivers, for the last few games, has not been playing the best basketball. He had that one great uh, quarter or half against the Utah Jazz and the rest was history. He had those two good games to start off the season, that game, and then the rest of it has been just Austin Rivers trying to force up a shot that just never really made sense in a lot of different instances. So a lot of people believe that Austin Rivers might be the one that loses minutes. And on top of that, there's more to it because also being talked about that other teams are making calls to possibly bring in Austin Rivers from the New York Knicks. So we could be getting more assets to get rid of somebody like Austin Rivers that can go and play for a contender. This is only the first of a few deals that I'm really expecting to happen. I still believe even though the Knicks were not trying to give up Kevin Knox and his exciting as I, as it was for someone like me who obviously likes Kevin Knox I, I also knew what that really meant it wasn't the fact that the Knicks didn't want to trade Kevin Knox no Kevin Knox was not going to be the move in this deal because they want to save him for a possible other deal that's coming down the line some deal that might you know include Kevin Knox Austin Rivers uh, Frank Nielkina or and you know another one of uh, our another pick so with all that being said I know I'm jumping around a lot but with all that being said with Kevin Knox not being a part of the Derrick Rose deal I don't think that that means that Kevin Knox is safe long term I think that that just means that Kevin Knox could be a part of a separate deal that might bring us in another move like Derrick Rose Derrick Rose is not a you know a, 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 a team changer yes Derrick Rose can be very helpful for a contending team for sure and he's definitely gonna be helpful for a young team like us with younger players that can help you know grow the team and hell help us even be some sort of a p word team i'm not gonna say it yet but with a move like this and with other moves i'm expecting down the line it could be looking like the knicks are making that hunt for the illustrious p word and let's get into that like i mentioned not too long ago i do believe that the knicks are pivoting away from the rebuild we are now in that stage of building a foundation like i've been saying i want this team to you know show that we have a foundation we are playing the right way we are trying to build something which will ultimately make other players want to come and play for this team Kawhi leonard still hasn't agreed or hasn't really uh buckled down on any kind of decision this coming offseason he's probably the most sought after free agent in this free agent class because everyone either ex uh, extended or signed their big deals and then you know anthony davis paul george's so on and so forth they're all staying with their team but Kawhi leonard is probably the biggest fish in the pond that is still you know not for sure coming back to the team and though i've joked about it and i'm going to make a video about it at some point right now it's a little too early we could talk about the fact that a Kawhi Leonard and Tom Thibodeau combination could be something that would be very fun to see outside of the fact that Kawhi Leonard's not one that plays a lot of minutes, so I don't know how that would work out, but as far as the schemes and defense, stuff like that, Kawhi Leonard could be a match made in heaven with the team that we have right now. But that's a thought for another day. The point of the matter is the Knicks need to build a foundation, build a team that is going to play and that is going to be you know, somewhat competitive as we've been this season. I feel like we already checked off the other things on our list as far as a, a, a front office that has common sense, you know, great head coaching staff. Now it's about making sure the product on the court is a good enough product to make other players, whether it be the big marquee free agents or other key free agents want to come and play for this team and help this team grow and become better as each year goes on. So at the end of the day, the Knicks are still sticking to the plan. The rebuild is just being cut a little bit short 
but we're still going in the trajectory of the plan. We went from the rebuild stage, now we are in the foundation stage is what I'm calling it. We're building that foundation to be a team that when we do become good, we stay good for a long period of time. Not just good for a few years, a la 2010 to 2014. You know, we don't want that over again. With all that being said, Derrick Rose plays a big part of that because Derrick Rose is somebody that's going to come to this team and help the team stay competitive. We're not making this move to develop Derrick Rose into possibly making him the MVP that he once was. No, Derrick Rose is being brought to this team to help this team be competitive. Right now, we are 11 and 14. 11, 14, 11, 13. All this points to what Ian Begley was saying in his um, assessment of the trade and assessment of what's to come next for the New York Knicks that, uh, on an SNY video that dropped on Twitter. It was everywhere, but that's what I saw, I saw it on Twitter. Where he was talking about the fact that, like, this is not the last move that's going to be made. And for those who are actually watching the team, we all knew that this is just the first of a few moves that are yet to come. Does our next move include bringing in a big fish like a Victor Oladipo, Alonzo Ball, or Zach Levine, one of those kind of guys? Or does it mean another move to bring in another solid uh, bench player that's going to be a role player, a rotation guy that's going to help this team be, uh, you know, a playoff team? Oh, I said the word. I, I I can't say it yet. I don't want to put that juju out there until I feel confident that this team's a P-word team. So I'm sorry. I said it. I'm sorry for cussing, y'all. I'm sorry for the younger audience out there. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Ian Bailey mentioned something about what I want to talk about next, and that's the lockdown at point at the guard position in general. He mentioned a few things that really um, stuck out to me that just made me feel even more at ease. I, like I say all the time, I trust Leon Rose and the front office, Scott Perry, all of them. They're they're doing a great job. They've been doing a great job. So with the trade and with who we swapped for Derrick Rose, at first I was great. I'm just a little worried about what was going to happen about Man quickly, but Ian Begley, he uh. He calmed me down a little bit as he normally does. So then the question then comes down, and this is what I was wondering is, what is the guard rotation going to look like? Who loses minutes? I had mentioned Austin Rivers earlier. Um, Ian Begley was talking about it. We saw tweets that Austin Rivers is probably going to be one of the next players on their way out. Uh, February 6th passed, meaning that anybody that we signed in the offseason is now um, able to be moved in a trade before they weren't able to be traded because that's the new contract rule, blah, 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 blah. But once February 6th passed, now people that we acquired in free agency, now they're being, now they're able to be, uh, traded. Austin Rivers is one of those players. So Ian Begley was talking about Elfer Payton though, in one sense, cause we know he has the no trade clause and the one way that El Elfer Payton, the only way I'm sure Elfer Payton will waive that no trade clause is if we trade him to a team that is a contender for an NBA championship. We know the Alfred Payton is better off, and as much as you guys might want to hate, to me, Alfred Payton is definitely better off as a backup point guard, not a third stringer, not a fourth stringer. Y'all can say what you want to say, especially with a contending team where he has other veterans around him. He would play really well in a second unit where he's able to just go out there, play defense and facilitate and not have to worry about, you know, aggressively trying to make shots that he knows he cannot make. He's just going out there and facilitating for the rest of the guys. I know that's probably hard to believe, but that is what Alfred Payton's bread and butter has been the entire career up until coming to the New York Knicks. You have Alfred Payton. In Emmanuel quickly as your point guards. I think it's too early to assume that Rose coming impacts quickly's role. We'll have to wait and see on that. If it does, that would be unfortunate. And it's worth noting on Peyton that at least one team in the playoff hunt had some interest in trading for Peyton, bringing him on to help bolster their backcourt. So that's something to keep an eye on as we get closer to this March 25th trade deadline. So with that being said, names that I've been throwing around were like the Clippers. You know, I'm sure there's, a, from what Ian Begley said, there are other contending teams that are making calls and that do have their eye on Alfred Peyton. So the moves aren't done, people. Don't panic. The front office knows what they are doing. They will do what they have to do and they will do it the right way. But anyways, what's your thoughts on the Derrick Rose trade? Let me know everything you're thinking in the comments below. Do you guys believe that the trade made sense? Are you guys worried about the log jam at the guard position? Like I said, Ian Bagley was saying that the Knicks their thought process is to make sure that Emmanuel quickly still is able to get the minutes and still is able to play. So that is one thing that they're making sure and they're going to be they're cautious of because Tom Thibodeau likes Emmanuel quickly. So don't be worried about Emmanuel quickly's minutes. He will be okay. All right. But let me know your thoughts about this move and other moves to come in the comments below. If you want to talk about the Heat game, talk about the Heat game. I'll mention it probably a little bit more in tomorrow's video when we're about to play the Heat again tomorrow night. All right. You guys know what it is. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Do not forget to like this video guys if you haven't already joined the ck crew membership program i got you guys on that but until next one see you guys in the next video
Let's get it. Much love to all you guys. D Rose and Nick again, and what number will you wear? Again, I don't know about recording this video. Maybe by the time the video comes up, the answer is there. Um, but I don't know. Anyways, I'll catch you guys next one. I'm out of here. Peace. Feeling like I won the lotto. Always taking trips with a new chick, asking where the time goes. Oh. And I wonder if this is all I'll know.